This is a rotator cuff tear patient on the right shoulder. Patient is on the beach position. Five portals are set up. Posterior portal, posterior lateral portal, anterior lateral portal, anterior portal, and BMS portal. After routine evaluation in glenohumeral humeral joint and decompression in subacromial space, the torn tendon was evaluated by scope through anterior lateral portal. The torn tendon was measured with a collaborate probe through posterior portal, which shows 1 cm anterior to posterior in diameter of the tear. Then the scope was moved to posterior lateral portal. Tendon debridement was performed with a shaver, which followed by bone band preparation with a high-speed burr, both from anterior lateral portal. A hybrid suture thread was passed with a clever hook from bursa side to the articular side through posterior portal. The penetration post position was on the posterior edge of torn tendon and lateral to the muscle tendon interface to avoid damage to the muscle. The free end of suture thread on the articular side was captured by suture retriever and retrieved from the anterior lateral portal. Another free end of suture thread on the bursa side was passed through the torn tendon to the articular side with help of clever hook. The penetration position was on the anterior edge of the torn tendon, which was approximately 1 cm anterior to the first posterior penetration point. The free end of suture thread on the articular side was captured by suture retriever and retrieved from the anterior lateral portal. The suture thread then creates a loop over the bursa side of the tendon. The clever hook penetrates the tendon again, 2 mm medial to the loop of tendon, to capture the two free ends of the suture thread from the articular side and then retrieve the end of the thread through posterior and the anterior portal separately. Subsequently, the suture thread passed the torn tendon in a modified Mesa Allen way without knotting. The tendon was left and bone band was posed. A needle was inserted through BMS portal to identify the proper position for bone marrow stimulation, followed by a 2 mm diameter hole passing through BMS portal to create holes on the greater tuberosity. Six holes were made on the exposed bone band to let the blood clot exudate. The two ends of suture were retrieved through anterior lateral portal by suture retriever and then passed through the eyelet of a lateral footprint anchor. After tightening the thread, the anchor was screwed in at the distal part of the greater tuberosity through the anterior lateral portal. Then the rotator cuff was repaired by pulled back to the footprint and covered all holes. Finally, the repaired rotator cuff is evaluated in the glenohumeral joint by the scope in posterior portal. When elevating the patient's arm, the blood clot exuded from the vent can be found. This technique includes many advantages, include no middle row tying, can avoid tissue strangulation, reduce stitch stimulation, pull tendon firmly to the footprint, low risk of damage on the tendon. Easy to learn and economic. So we believe that this technique avoids a negative impact by the middle row anchor and incorporate BMS to promote tendon healing. It is safe and easy way for rotator cuff repair.